come sit down. And we'd hear the click of the microwave and run, 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 and the dog would she'd trip over Boz, and we'd hear that, and we'd say, just come. And so we got it all together. We corporately pulled it all together. We had a wonderful time of fellowship together. But Jesus responded and said, but Martha was distracted, and then Jesus answered and said, Martha, Martha. It's kind of important when he says it twice. Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. Think about this in your prayer time. What is worrying you and what is troubling you in many things? Maybe God's got things to say to you in your prayer time, but most of your prayer time is spent being worried and troubled about many things. We can be like Martha. It's pretty easy, right? Right? Hydro bill comes in. Pretty easy to be worried. Right? Port card comes in the mail. Kids not getting what you thought. Pretty easy to be worried. You hear rumors. You hear reports. You hear stuff. But Jesus would say to you today, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. So you can justify being worried. I have a relative that takes great pride in the fact that she's a worry wart. Great pride in that. Will tell you she will worry, 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 worry. Okay? She can great, take great pride in it, but it occupies all of her time. Steals all of her peace. Steals all of her joy. And the only time she can get to sleep is when she knows that she's received a phone call that everyone's returned home safe. I get the importance of being wanting to be have everyone home safe. I get that. But when you consistently or constantly worry, 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 worry. There's no time in the middle of all of that for the Lord to say, I'm the good shepherd. Amen. I go before you. There's no time to hear the scripture that says, I give my beloved sleep. Amen. Because I'm telling you, they will be up all night waiting and waiting and waiting. So don't mistake what I'm trying to say. It's important to have, I guess, healthy concern. But when it completely occupies your time and you go, I don't have time to talk to God about anything. I don't have time to love the Lord. I don't have time to praise the Lord. Because we've got all this world to serve. Then we've missed what Jesus said here. He said, one thing is needed. What is your one thing? Only you can determine that. Only you can determine your one thing. Right? What is it that the Lord whispers in your heart and says, I want you to, right now, today, this is your task at hand. That's your task. One thing is needed today. Tomorrow, we know the word says the, about worry. Worry, you know, he says, you toil and you spin. You toil and you spin. And God says, but I've got this all figured out. The birds of the air, they don't worry. They don't worry. My four little chickens, I worry about them. It's getting colder. I worry about them. And every day I hear the rooster and I see them clucking around looking for food. And you know what? The Lord takes care of them. The Lord shows me and I take care of them too. But the point is this. God wants to fellowship and love us. He wants to show us. He wants to walk with us and talk with us. See, Adam and Eve, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Adam and Eve, they weren't having to bombard the gates of heaven open. They weren't having to say, God, somehow. No, he said they fellowship. They walked and talked in the cool of the day. Pretty simple fellowship with God. It didn't say they were travailing in prayer at the stump to somehow get God to talk. God said, you guys are naked. Who, who told you you're naked? Who told you you're naked? God was, not even, God was not even going after, if you would, the sin. He said, who told you that wrong mindset? We know the mindset that Jesus said here. He said, let this mind be in you. I'm not saying it's okay to sin. It's not okay to sin. It's not okay to walk in the flesh. We know the works of the flesh. You're going to reap all kinds of corruption. You're going to reap junk. Don't do it. Think about that. You want to walk, if you want to walk in the flesh, you will reap the results of the flesh. Period. <laughs> Don't take simple fellowship with God as a license to do what you want. You can do what you want because God is no respecter of persons, but the results of that we know are death. And it's a slippery slope. The wages of sin are death. Period. So you need to choose not to do that. But we also need to choose to say, Lord, I'm just going to love on you. I'm going to let you show me today what is my one thing. What is the one thing God's calling you to do? 
one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. So this is what you've got to catch, and I will close. The one thing that is necessary is the Word of God. You need to get a word on your situation. Okay? The one thing that is necessary, the Word says, with long life, I will satisfy those who love me. That's a word. That's a word for you, June. That's a word for Wes. That's a word for Wayne. That's a word for anybody that will take it. That's a scripture. That's a word. With long life, I have satisfied you. You can claim that. When somebody comes along with a doctor's report and says, well, we've got a bit of cancer to look after here, you can begin to speak out the word and say, with long life, God has satisfied me. Okay? And yes, you want to know something? We as Christians will see people that will come and go. People that we've prayed for and said, but they didn't get healed. I can't answer why that happens. But what I will not do is what a lot of churches do and say, well, God, to this case, he changed his mind. Or, well, God was doing this to teach us something. Or, well, no, it's not on God's side. I'm sorry. We don't like it because we don't ever like it to be us. Okay? But God is a healer. Period. So when healing does not happen, I have seen some of my beloved friends go home to be with the Lord. And we have stood in prayer. And we have, we have believed God for healing. And it didn't always work out the way we had hoped. But I am not going to begin to tag that on God when God says he's the healer. When God says the children's bread is, uh, is healing. When God says he's no respecter of persons. Therefore, if God's no respecter of persons, and if healing is in his wings. See, these are all scriptures we know. We've got to begin to say, wait a minute, if God said it, then that, that settles God's end of things. Amen. There's another end of things, which is us. So I don't know. Okay? I don't know. I will say this as a pastor. I will say I have had some friends that I have known that one was, was not going to let go of some, some bitterness. And we talk about it, say, you've got to release that, because the Word says that if you can't forgive, how is God supposed to forgive you? I'm not saying that's why they went home. But those were discussions that we had. Okay? Those were discussions that we had. So you could, you, what do you do then? You say, Lord, show me the one thing. What is the one thing? What is the word that I need in this situation? Could unforgiveness block you? For sure. Could bitterness block you? For sure. Could resentment block you? For sure. Could a proud heart block you? For sure. Don't let those things even root in your heart. The beautiful part is this. If you think, okay, Maybe some of those things have happened to me because life has happened to you. Come before the Lord and just give that to the Lord. Repent and say, Lord, forgive me for some of this thinking, some of these things that are in my heart. Some of these things that are in my heart. When we were away on this conference, and I will close in two minutes, they were talking about pastors, and somebody in the van said to me, oh, pastoring's, pastoring's hard. Pastoring, is, is, isn't it easy? And I'm like, I said, no, actually, it's not. And so she was dumbfounded mm -hmm. because she couldn't, a friend of mine had stepped down and was not going to pastor anymore. And we were just having a little chat about that. And so I'm not looking for a pity party. I'm just saying stuff that goes on. Life has happened to all of us. But we can't let that root in our heart because it will take away your one thing. Your one thing needs to be what has God called you to do? What has God called you to do? But it can't stray away from the word. It's got to stay hooked to what the Bible says is true. So the one thing is God is not going to tell you you're going to die of cancer because I need you in heaven now. That's not a one thing that fits with God. That doesn't fit with God. Lung transplants, that, that lungs that weren't working right, we could have just said, well, let's just put him in the ground because then he can go and be in heaven with your husband and life will be good. That's not a one thing that connects with God. You've got to find the one thing that connects with God that says this is scriptural and this is what God has called me to do. Okay? And it's just something to think about because I know this is simple, but... Philippians 2.5, let this mind be in you. We've got to begin to look at our mind. Where is our mind taking us? What is our mind thinking? Don't let unimportant obsessions. One last scripture, Philippians 1.6. And I will, I will close. Philippians 1.6. This is for you. This you can. You're one thing for today. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus. 
He has completed a good work in you. So you say, Pastor, we've had some roadblocks, we've had some ditches, we've had some stuff. Sure you have. We've all have. But he said he's going to complete a good work in you. But it needs to still be hooked to the one thing. You can't go off and do your own work. You do your own work, you're kind of on your own. But when you find that one thing, walking in the Spirit, listening to God, fellowshipping with Him, don't make it complicated. Just love Jesus. Amen. Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you that we can look at the Scripture today. And today, Lord, as we walk in this, Father, we undo our works mentality and we hook up to your love mentality. We look up to your spirit mentality. We look up, Lord, to those things that are pleasing to you and we choose to do those things. And we open our hearts up, Father, to let this mind be in you. We open our hearts, Lord, to find that. In you. And we thank you today as a congregation that we're going to find that one thing. We're not going to overcomplicate it. We're going to walk it out day by day by day. We thank you, Father. Your word says that you go before us. I speak this over the congregation and everybody listening right now, that we are going to be confident of the very thing, that he who has begun a good work in us will complete it until the day of Christ, Jesus Christ. Lord, that you will complete it, that those prayers that we're praying will be answered, that those situations that we're going through will be turned around based on the word of God. And we believe that today in Jesus' name. If you're hearing this today and you say, Pastor, I've never received Jesus, and I would like to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I invite you to pray with us right now. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, come to you today. I come to you today. I give you all of my need. I give you all of my sin. I give you my stuff. And I ask that you would wash me clean. Come into my heart. Make me new. Because Lord Jesus, I want to live for you. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. If you prayed that, please send us an email. We'd love to get in contact with you and know that Jesus will make a way where there is no way. Amen. You are just.